So then you have to ask yourself, well, what is transformation? Watch this, you all. Pay attention to these words. Transformation is a change in form, appearance, nature, or character. And the Bible says that we manifest, that the way we manifest transformation is by renewing the mind. Again, a transformation is a change in the form, appearance, nature, or character. And the way we manifest transformation is by what? Renewing the mind. Whatever it is you're going through, if you want your situation to be transformed, it starts with dealing with the way you think about it. Yes. That's the renewing your mind part. Again, remember, transform means to change the appearance of something. So let's get real practical. If your money looking funny, uh -oh. and you want to transform hmm. or change the appearance of the way your money is looking, what must you do first? Renew the mind. Hmm. Listen, not work more hours. Hmm. Not get two jobs. No, the first thing you must do is you have to renew the mind. Re remember, transformation is changing the appearance, nature, character, or form. If your marriage is not looking right, hmm. and you want to change the appearance of your marriage, if you want to change the appearance of your family situation, whatever appearance you want to change, it first happens when you do what? When you renew your mind, you all. Whatever it is you're going through, if you want to transform, it starts with dealing with the way you think about it first, and that's the renewing your mind part. Amen. When you renew something, you revive it. You restore it. You have to reestablish it. Hmm. Without renewing your mind, you cannot access the next level. So when we look at verse 1, let's put, let, let's put verse 1 back on the board. Let me say that again. Without renewing of the mind, hmm. you cannot access your next level. I gave this analogy a long time ago. How many of y'all, by show of hands, have ever had to get your license renewed? How many of y'all had some troubles with that license? Not me, but some of you all have. <laughs> For condemnation, I had other troubles. It just went with the license. And I gave this analogy a long time ago. When they suspend your license, don't talk back to me, this is rhetorical. When they suspend your license, that means what? You cannot drive, right? <laughs> Driving is symbolic of your ability to what? To move forward. You cannot move forward until you what? Renew your license. Right? Yeah. If your license is not renewed, that means it's suspended. You have no motion in the vehicle. It's the same way in the spirit world. Mm. When you do not renew your mind, spiritually your movement becomes suspended and you cannot go forward. See, there's a lot of people trying to go forward supernaturally and in their life, but they're walking around on a suspended spiritual license. Mm. Yeah. You can't go nowhere. Let, God catch you trying to, let me catch you trying to walk into that blessing without renewing that mind. Y'all yeah. know what happens when the police catch you in the whip, the car, whatever you want to call it, when they catch you in the car with that license suspended? They apprehend you. They take you to jail. Yes. What are we saying? Yes. There's consequences for moving around without a renewed license. Y'all, let me tell you something. There's consequences in the spirit world when you try to move around without a renewed mind, y'all. It's going to cost you something. So the first thing you must do to access the next level and to gain access to your ability to go forward is you have to renew your mind. So when we look at verse 1, it says this. And again, he entered to Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Who? Jesus. Immediately, many people gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. Now watch this. Even at the very onset of the text, you have a group of friends who are operating with a renewed mind. Let me prove it to you. Even at the very onset of this text, you have a group of people that are operating with a renewed mind. Listen, you have these five men who have what? Heard that there was power in the house of God. And I call it the house of God simply because it was a house 
that God himself was in, and he was operating in full demonstration of his power. How many of you know that whenever God is in the house, the house becomes his house? Yes. How many of y'all know that? Whenever God is in the house, the house becomes his house. Yes. So, so they hear that Jesus is in the house, and immediately they begin to draw to him. Let's stop right there. This is the foundation in which the mind begins to operate in a renewed state. What's the foundation? First, they hear that Jesus is in a specific location, and they do what? They go to that location. They go to where Jesus is. Man of God, let me see your Bible. You're going to lose your page. Y'all, these men heard that Jesus was in the house, right? All four of them, with their buddy, who's paralyzed on a bed, they carry him to the house where Jesus was. So the first step and the first dimension in operating or gaining your next level is renewing the mind. So they said, wait a minute. We hear that Jesus is in the house. We hear that there's power is in the house. So guess what the first thing they did was? They went to where Jesus was. We tell people all the time, what's in here? Right? Where's Jesus? You know how many answers I got from in here? You know how much direction I got from in here? Come on. You know why they gave it the acronym basic instructions before leaving work? Before leaving earth? Before leaving work too. Read the Bible. <laughs> but watch this. Every time I got into the word or every time I delved into the presence of the Lord, I was granted access to the next level. Mm. Guess what? Because I came to where Jesus was. See, the enemy will always hinder you from accessing your next level by attacking you in the mind. Hmm. The body is temporary. Come on. But if he can get your mind, I'm telling you, you know how many battles I fought in the mind? Yeah. That's, why I prayed, that's why I prayed against depression. You know how they say he already lost because he was defeated in the mind. I gave this analogy a long time ago. Me and Jamal, or me, Jamal, or Brother Corey, we hooping. And I gave this analogy a long time ago. We going up against the team, and we got on the muscle gang shirts. We already swole. We already off the pump. And when we come in there, Jamal talks so much. <laughs> and, oh, you ain't finna do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Listen, this guy was defeated in his mind right. before he already physically played the game. Right. And Jamal abused him that game. <laughs> and we went on to win by a hefty number of points, y'all. We don't always win by two or four. Sometimes we blow folks out. But let me tell you something. That's exactly how the enemy operates. Before you even get to the battle, yeah. before you even purchase the house, before you even get the building, he's already fighting you in the mind. And if he can defeat you in the mind, he can stop you from accessing your next level. Huh. So watch this. The first step is the foundation. I'm sorry, the first step in the foundation begins when these guys operate in a renewed mind state. First, they hear that Jesus is at a specific location, and they go to that location. Do you know how many people hear that healing is at the church, that deliverance is at the church, that hmm. the power of God over any situation is at the church? Do you know how many people hear that and still won't come to church? Come on. You know why? Because their mind about church has not been renewed. Right. See? Right. You know what people say about church? Hmm. The hypocrites up in there. You better go. The pastor sleeping around. Ooh, shut this up. person sleeping around. Hmm. The deacons jumping off. Oh. They smoking in the back. Listen. What? They mind. <laughs> what you now listen. Say? Now listen. <laughs> they mind about church. Huh. It's already been tainted, thus robbing them of the power. They won't go because they already think ain't no power there. Come on. When I tell people to come to church. It ain't just to hear me preach. It's because I believe that there's power in the yeah, word of God. That's right. If I was preaching the book of Terrence, don't come. <laughs> Let's open up the first Terrence chapter Ethan verse Taylor. No, we ain't going to do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> ain't no power in that. Come on. I'm telling you about the same power that was given to me to help me change my situation. But that's why people don't come to church. Because they have not renewed their mind mm -hmm. about the power that is in the house of God. Amen. Jesus. That's why the scripture says when two or three are gathered together, he's in the midst. There's power in the house. Yes, it is. Man. People don't believe that there's power in the house. Uh -huh. And as long as they don't believe that, their mindset would always be laxadaisy. Uh -huh. They Listen, they'll go to church just to say they went. Uh -huh. I went. And you're still going to do what you're going to do afterwards. So watch this. 
They won't come to the place where Jesus is because their mind has not been, re been renewed. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on what? Things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. People won't come to Jesus because they have set their minds on things of the flesh. So they live according to what they have set their mind on. Hmm. These five friends, watch this, had their mind set on the fact that we need to experience the power of God. So when they heard that Jesus was in a particular place, the scripture says immediately they went to where Jesus was. Now watch this. Not only did these men come to where Jesus was, but they came expecting. Y'all, this is the second thing. First, you got to renew your mind. You want to access next level living. Next level living requires next level thinking. So you have to renew your mind. The second thing you got to do is you got to come expecting. Hmm. Y'all listen. Stop coming to church without expectation. Come on. Oh, no, no, I'm so serious. Because it throws off the atmosphere for everybody else. Come on. We got to work that much harder because you sitting there, you don't expect nothing. Ooh, wait. I'm up there. I want something. Come on. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah. You know, I can hear <laughs> So I looked at Bree, I, I, I wanted Bree to take it up, take it higher. But sometimes, like I said, you got to worship them kings. So I looked at Bree, and then she hit it. Y'all, you have to come to church expecting. Why come if you're not expecting? Come on. Why come? Watch this. The man who was paralyzed, he didn't want to live in a state of paralysis for the rest of his life. So he decided, watch this, if I want to live on another level... I have to get to where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The man who was paralyzed, I mean, he wasn't moving, right? He decided, I don't want to be in this state of paralysis for the rest of my life, so I got to get to where Jesus is. Amen. The person who is not moving, the person whose finances is not moving, the person whose life goals are not moving, the person whose relationship is not moving, mm. has to decide that I do not want to be in this state of paralysis for the rest of my life, so I got to get to where Jesus is. Mm. Some of y'all missed it. I'm going to say it again. Mm. The man, sometimes you got to read it like I read it to take. Come on. The man who was paralyzed did not want to live in a state of paralysis for the rest of his life. So he decided, if I want to live on another level, I got to get to where Jesus is. Once you decide that, hey, my situation is not moving and I need some movement, that means I got to get to where Jesus is. Yes. yes. When I come to church, listen, Taylor, Taylor did this to me today. <laughs> not now. Sit down with me, Daddy. Taylor, I got to get to where Jesus is. We had all morning to do that. We had Saturday night. I played with you for a good amount of time. And when you were supposed to go to bed, I let you come kick it in the room. <laughs> On Sunday, I don't have time for Taylor to take the preeminence of God. Guess what? I'm trying to get to where Jesus is. Yes. I'm trying to usher in his presence. Mm. I got things and requests before God. I got financial problems I need to figure out. I have come vision on, come answers on, come on. that I need to be revealed to me. When I come into the presence of the Lord, I don't have time to be worried about nobody else. Right. I got to get into the presence. This man paralyzed. You think he care about anybody else? No. I can't walk. Y'all can't. <clears throat> Maybe your money good, so you got time to tax. I know. Maybe everything going A-OK -okay, so you can check ESPN real quick. I don't. When I come into the house of the Lord, I'm trying to get in God's face. Yes. Many, many believers are not experiencing next level living because they don't know how to get into the presence of God. Many believers are not experiencing next level living because they don't know how to get into the presence of God. This is why the enemy tries so hard to block your study time. This is why he tries so hard to block your alone time. To block your corporate worship. Because all these things draw you closer to the presence of God. If the enemy can keep you from out of his presence, he can keep you from accessing the next level. You can go to the building. 
But I want to keep you from out of God's face. How many of y'all know the, the, the scripture, I mean, the song says in your presence. That's 